What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is kind of sad. As you can see, we are here in the garage standing in front of the salty chicken or at this point in its life, the naked chicken. But we're, this is not the topic of today's video. You guys have seen a couple build series on this. Uh, so I hope you guys are liking what you're seeing so far as we are getting underway here. But today's topic is the cow. Now I know I've been talking about it much. You guys haven't seen much of it since we went down to Florida and Grudge Race and did all that fun stuff. But some things have happened since then. So I don't even know where to start. Awesome day, RPM Motorsports Dino Day. We were up there, the cow was there. It was baller. I mean, it, it was so much fun. We were having a blast and it was mainly for the LT power plants, you know, the LT1, the LT4, the new Gen 5 motors, the direct injected stuff. You guys know who you are if you're out there. Now there came a point in the day where they were a little low on cars. It was right around the time everyone was starting to eat. Uh, the list for the dyno slots kind of nosed off a little bit and we're like, hey, let's put the cow on the dyno. So what do I do? I say, hell yeah. I grab some C16 out of the back, top her off, put her in there, make sure she's got enough fuel so she doesn't cut out or do anything like that. And the guys from RPM Motorsports get her strapped down. So we got on the dyno and everything was good. Chris was getting the tack signal hooked up on my car, which is pretty shitty because my coils are hidden underneath the car. That's why when you pop the hood, you don't see any coils, you don't see any plug wires or anything like that. They're underneath the vehicle, so Chris has to lay down, put a tack signal on there. That's where he's gonna get the pickup for the dyno and to uh, read at obviously the tack and everything like that. So he was doing that. I hop over on the other side. I start messing with the boost controller. Now mind you, back in the day, Jeff would do all that and I would just watch but now I'm learning more so I control it, which is kind of terrifying, but we go in there, we look at it. I asked Wes what the previous setup we had at it when we were at the track, and that was somewhere, you know, 16, 17 pounds. What I put on that track, I remember before I made a pass, how much more did I add on? Being we're on the dyno, dyno day, let's make a nice number. Uh, I'd turn it up a little bit. My goal for the first one was right around 20 pounds, which is, you know, it's up there for a four bolt head LS style block. That four bolt head really kind of finds its limit. You know, I try to keep it at 20 or below just for preservation purposes because I'm not in the market to buy a new motor. You can go up there a little bit more. The limit, the ceiling, you know, you see guys out there running 26 pounds on them. Uh, at that point, it's either going to lift the head and push some water, or you're going to push water consistently, or you're going to torch the block, blow a head gasket, something like that. Definitely not a go-to there. So, um, you know, we turned it up. First pull went good, you know, right around 20 pounds. Positive thinking, Chris. What are we making? Give the camera a number on the dyno right now. 700. <laughs> Dino did not pick up anything tax signal wise. Um, it read like, at first it read like 4,000 foot pounds of torque and like, I think close to 4,000 horsepower. So I poke my head in there, stick my head in the car, said, Chris, what do you want to see? He goes, turn this thing up. So when I go in, I go back over there, I put another two pounds of CO2 pressure on top of the gate. I throw a couple more pounds on there and, uh, you know, made 21 pounds. So went from like 19 to 21, so 21, it sounded very, very, very good. one 21 pound of boost range on that fuel normally net you know a thousand a thousand fifty in that range uh, pretty much 19 pounds will get you right near a thousand to the tire uh, so 21 you know it's getting up there 
the IATs were good, so everything was doing good on the car. So we go in there and we turn it up a little bit more. So this is kind of where stuff gets iffy. Everyone had their phones out, which is cool. You know, that's kind of what I like because the car is my baby. Um, obviously not trying to steal the show from RPM Motorsports at all. If anything, just highlight the work that we do there because this car is a product of everyone at RPM Motorsports from Ryan, Martin, Donnie, Chris, Jeff, everyone has had their hand in this build. We turned up a little bit more and mind you, these springs have been in there for two years. You know, they're definitely due for a change. Uh, stock heads, that block has 60,000 miles on it. And we turn it up a little bit more. So we get it back on the dyno and we do a pull and it just sounds like a dog. It's just, the pull is longer than it should. It's not as violent as it should. The boost doesn't come in nearly as hard as it should. And I'm just like, hmm, that's weird. what happened. So I'm at the point now where, where every pull I'm like, holy God, I don't know if I could take this, man. This is stressful to watch. If it lets go, I mean, that's pretty shitty. I don't know what I'm going to do. Take the LS1 out of this and just make 500 horsepower and that. I don't know. I, what I do? I don't know. Kind of look around. We, we check everything. Um, Chris says, man, it only made 16 pounds of boost, which is weird because I had it turned up more from 21. Um, so I'm like, hmm, what the hell could that be? 16 pounds of boost. So at this point I say, hey, could it be a charge pipe blew off? Because that's happened before. When it happened before though, it wouldn't make it wouldn't make 16 pounds of boost, really. So we're like, damn, that's pretty weird. 16 pounds of boost is a weak number. Uh, let's put more on the gate maybe and try it again. I'm not sure. So then I kind of say, hey man, last time I was at the track, that CO2 bottle came open when I was going down track and it dumped a ton of pressure, a ton of pressure. Now I just had it filled and you really want to have enough CO2. You don't want to run out and have this happen, especially if you're at the track. That's like running out of nitrous at the track. It's just, then what do you do? You're toast. So we tried again and pow, it makes another 16 pounds. And we're like, man, that's shitty. Um, so what it showed on the dyno on the 21 pound of boost pull, that, you know, it said, it, originally it said 18,000 foot-pounds of torque and 4,000 horsepower. Huge numbers. Everyone was going, no, it didn't make that much. Obviously, there was an issue picking up tack signal and reading on the dyno, uh, which does, normally our dyno, our dyno RPM Motorsports is dead on. Uh, when it loses tack signal like that on a car that's got a 400 in it, you know, it's definitely different dynoing that than it would be throwing this on there. So we tried to adjust it and kind of mess with it, do it by gear ratio, do it by mile an hour, and it would just show like 1,200 foot-pounds of torque and 800 horsepower. Obviously on a turbo car, that's not accurate, so we knew something was off, but I can tell you right now from the way it sounded, that was a 1,000 horsepower pull all day long. But then after that, we don't know what happened. It's down on power. We can't get into boost. Definitely a heartbreaker. So as most of you guys know, Nick, Guitar Mageddon ZL1 has called me out. Um, so I'll be going to the next YouTube call out. But man, we got to get the car right first. So we're at the point now where um, tomorrow is Tuesday. We are going to, today when you guys see this, it will be Tuesday. So at the end of the day today, we are going to pull the cow in the shop, take a look at it, see what we find. In my mind and in Jeff's mind, it sounds like a wastegate is stuck open. When we back the car off the dyno, there was a torch spot on the ground uh, that was just lit up. Uh, definitely got some heat. Only one though. Now it's got two wastegates, so if it was even, it would be on both. So that's where we're at now. The cow is definitely wounded, not 100%. Now this is a big deal because this Thursday is the first list race at Galop Motorsports Park. They're doing this awesome list race where I think they're calling it the Mule City Street Shootout, something like that. They're doing a top 10 list that caters solely to street cars, which is awesome because a lot of cars there are street cars. Now some of the rules are titles, tags, insurance, factory dash, no Lexan windows, no back half cars, DOT tires. If it comes with back seats, it's got to have back seats. Stuff like that. Um, any power adder though, they don't really limit it too much. They just limit it on what kind of makes a street car, which is really what I built the car for, for an event like that. 
So that's gonna be happening the last Thursday of every month at Galat Motorsports Park. So this Thursday, I will be there. The ZL1 will be there. RPM Motorsports will be there. So I hope to see a ton of you guys out there. I'll plug this in tomorrow's video and the following video. But Glot Motorsports Park, I think it gates open at 5.30 and it's over at 11. So Thursday night, Glot Motorsports Park, we will be running out there. It's awesome because once you're on the list, this will be the qualifying for the list. It's all no time. Um, and then after that, it just heads up pro tree list racing. So if I'm three, I got to race two to get to one, just like on Street Outlaws, which is going to be very interesting. So I will be bringing you guys coverage of that. Not only will I be doing that, but... Galat will have someone filming there and there'll be a little series on that as well. So that's what's going on here. We got to get the cow right before we go to this race. Um, other than that, other than that, an update on it is it will be going on E85 the following week. Um, Chris helped me get everything I need. I got a GM flex fuel sensor. I got some fittings that I need. And then Jeff's gonna put that in. We're gonna swap out injectors from 85 pound fast injectors to 1700X injector dynamics injectors, which are badass. Chris is going to wire it up and then slap it on the dyno, put some E85 in it and see what kind of power we can make. Other than that, that's what's going on today. RPM Motorsports shirts are in. will be released on my channel tomorrow. So if you guys want to get an RPM Motorsport shirt, I'll be revealing them tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll also be putting them up on the website. So you guys will be able to go to rpmmotorsportsnc.com and pick some up. To say that they are badass shirts is an understatement. Ryan and everyone there has killed it. I had one idea that I ended up making onto a shirt, which I think is pretty sweet. Um, and I take a lot of pride in you know everything I do up there. So I'm pretty happy. Hopefully it sells a lot and they're a bunch of good looking shirts. Other than that, I want to thank you guys for watching. Like always, comment, like, subscribe. If it's your first time watching, be sure to go and click that subscribe button. Click the bell. We are going headfirst into racing season. Got to get everything tidied up, ready to go. Build series is underway. More mods coming for the truck. Doing stuff to the Camaro. You're not going to want to miss this. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.